now before adding other methods let let's test this if this create link async this method is working and we are able to save this uh, the link in the database so first thing what i'll do i'll simply extract the interface from here as well we will keep on adding other methods as per our requirement so right now let's register this link service in our dependency container so builder dot services dot add transient and i link service with link service <clears throat> all right okay now there is one problem where is it link service will come here we have i link service here only now that short code generator that that component that exists in client project right in client shared component short url generator form right that ui is here so from here we need to generate that we need to call that uh, that method but right now we have that interface and service both defined in services folder in main project which is server project blazing urls so what we need to do first we need to move this i link service interface to the client project okay we can't move this link service implementation to the client project because it has a database and whatever is in the client project that is going to be shipped to the browser so we cannot have database related stuff and all that thing in the client project we need to have this here only we just need to move i link service interface so in client project let's create a folder so here i'll simply add a new folder maybe interfaces or contracts so name is up to you you can name it whatever you want and then inside this let's create a i link service interface and let's copy this or maybe cut this from our blazing urls project to this client project all right save it now we have it here we just need to fix the using statement in our link service now everything is fine we have interface there now we can directly inject this interface in the shared components short url generator form okay because we need to use that here so we'll say inject i link service let's add using statement here we'll say link service save it and now we have this method shorten url async where we are setting is processing to true now instead of this await tax dot delay here we'll say word link equals await link service dot create link async now it needs a link create dtu so let's create that link create dtu so word dtu equals new link create dtu so we need to use this using statement and this using statement we are going to use dtus throughout all our components so it's better to move both of these usings to underscore imports so that we don't don't need want to uh, we don't have to add these usings on each and every component so let's cut these from here go to underscore imports or tracer and let's add in both the projects all right so save everything and we are good now here we have i link service and now we can create link create dtu it needs long url and user id so long url we know we have this underscore model dot long url we can get it from here but we need user id as well so we need to get the user id we know we will be logged in not in every case but if we are logged in it gives us this blazer gives us one cascading parameter which is passed to each and every component and page routable page component 
that is public and task of authentication state get set task of authentication state authentication state auth state all right and this is going to be in cascading parameter like this so blazor framework is going to provide this for us and we can use this to get the actual authentication state if user is logged in or not logged in and if user is logged in what is the identity what user id and all those stuff so we can get these things so here inside the shortened url async what we'll do we'll simply say where let's say auth state equals await this auth state task because this is a task of authentication state so we can await it now we have this authentication state here on this we can check if auth state dot user dot identity identity what is it if this is null or auth state dot user dot identity dot is authenticated if user is if identity is null or user is not authenticated okay so in both of these cases we know user is not logged in user is not logged in but our system our project it needs it requires user to be logged in right then only we can get the user id and we can generate a short url so from here what we'll do we we'll can say return to or navigate to navigate to maybe login page all right so for navigating let's inject navigation manager navigation manager and using this navigation manager we will simply navigate user to slash account slash login page which is our login page all right and then we'll simply return from here we will not do anything further now if that's not the case that means user is logged in identity is there is authenticated is true so now we know user is logged in we just need to fetch the user id for that what we can do we can say var user id equals we have auth state inside auth state we have user which is actually claims principal from here we can get all the claims and we can get the value for user id that is name identifier default uh, id name identifier basically so on this we can say dot we could find it from claims or maybe we can use find first this helper method so here we just need to provide claim type and that we know for user ids it is claim types which will come from using system security claims dot name identifier like this and here we can say dot value okay so for this we know this is not going to be null because we already checked it so now we have user id ready all right now we can use this user id here so our dto is ready now into this create link async we can pass this dto and now everything is fine it should work but it is not going to work there is a problem which i'm going, going to discuss with you but before that i just want to show you if how things are working and what error we are going to get all right let's run it there is some error let's see what it is link service generic type what is it i link service all right because we moved this to client interfaces so using statement was missing let's add it 
let's run it now okay it's coming <clears throat> Okay, we are here. Let's add some URL. Anything? Click on shorten URL and breakpoint got hit. All right, we are here. We came here. Auth state. If we check this auth state is authenticated is false that means it is going to come here and it will navigate us to login page here we can log in what was the password pwd at the rate one two three was it the password yes now there is some error we'll check that but if you see we added long URL we press shorten URL it navigated us to login page now after logging in we came back but now that URL is lost from here we don't have that URL now I need to add that URL again so this is not a good user experience it should be something like this if we have added that and it navigates us to login and if we come back to this page it should already have that url somewhere and after logging in it should simply process that that is the actual uh, that is the better user experience we'll work on that but before that let's see what's the error so if we come here in console we check cannot provide a value for property link service on type this there is no registered service of type this so this is typical uh, render mode auto problem so i already have a dedicated video for this to explain how to register services for interactive auto render mode how to fetch data from server with interactive auto mode i'm going to drop the link of that video in the description as well or you can go to my channel and there you can find that so youtube dot com slash at the rate of high prints if you go to my channel here if you go to videos and this one so this current error that is explained in this video with why that problem is there what is the solution and all that stuff so how to fetch data from server in blazor interactive auto render mode this is the video i'm going to drop this link in the description box and while we are here so please subscribe my channel if you haven't already all right so let's quickly see what is the issue it is saying they cannot provide a value for link service for this i link service so it should be we have already registered it but it is saying it cannot find that why but when we opened this app then there was not this problem was not there let's try it again i'll simply open it when i'll run it here also this form is here but there is no error now it is initially there is no error after that this error comes after some time so the thing here is uh where are we so how this render mode interactive auto works first it works on server first it executes on server and when we talk about server in interactive uh, auto render mode with blazor so whenever we talk about server that is this first project which is actually sp.net core blazor application then whenever we talk about client that is this client with web assembly so initially it works on this blazing urls main project here we have program.cs where we have registered this service so it finds that and after that when we revisit that page or we already opened that page then comes back or maybe after pre-rendering it comes to this client project and here because this is here after that when it gets executed inside this client project then 
there is no registration in program.cs so there should be some registration in program.cs for this i link service okay now we are going to get a problem the problem is this i link service the implementation lives in the main project link service we cannot you uh, move this link service to the client project because it has our database logic so that means we need to have some other approach there now that video which i just talked about how to fetch data so that is a very detailed video you will get everything to know using that video so i would recommend you to just pause this video here go to that video check that video out and then come back to this video so that you know what we are going to do next and why we are going to do next that thing okay so now when we talk about interactive auto so for blazor server over signal r it is going to simply come to this main project it is going to find this but from client from when it executes inside web assembly then there is no server so it cannot directly call this link service it cannot come to this project so in that case we need to in order to fetch data we need to use api endpoints so we are going to use minimal api in this project you could use maybe grpc or other no not grpc http api basically so http api for that we need to have api in our main project then we need to have that api's client in the client project all right so in this main blazing uh, urls project let's create a folder we'll say endpoints and inside this i'm going to create a link endpoints dot cs <clears throat> now i'm going to use minimal api here so let's use this public static class link endpoints here we'll say public static and the we are going to use extension methods in order to register our endpoints so here we'll say public static i endpoint route builder here we'll say map link endpoint something like this this name is up to you you can name it whatever you want and here we'll have this i endpoint route builder and this builder will name it app so it is going to be same as if we come to program.cs and here if we want to define something for example we'll say app dot map get and all these this stuff we are going to do this here okay so yeah here what we are going to do we are going to say app dot map link endpoints like this all right now let's go to this method and from here we'll simply return app this chained extension method this is the approach microsoft are using so i use this approach always so that we can chain anything for example if you see this first one this is also the same thing so we can chain so instead of having this separate we can simply do something like this it will work and it is not going to work why doesn't contain a map i and oh this this is different this is endpoint convention builder so what i mean is maybe if we have multiple endpoints classes so we can ma map this like this something like this so we can chain all these if we want to all right <clears throat> so inside this we'll create an endpoint to create a link link url okay so here let's do this we'll say app dot map post this is going to be post endpoint first we need to define our pattern which is url so here we'll say api slash links that's all this is the restful api so api slash links with post it is going to create a new link now let's define our handler here so first thing we will get something from the body and that something is going to be link create dtu this thing this dtu we are going to get from request then we will inject our i link service in order to call that method on this i link service will add our using so here we'll say link service and then it's always a good idea to 
get the current user id from here as well right now we are getting that user id from link credit you but because this is a rest api request maybe someone can modify it on the way or from ui we can pass any user id if that user id exists then it will not be safe and secure so for that what we can do we can simply cross verify this user id passed as a parameter in this link create dtu with the current logged in user which we are going to get from request all right so for that we can simply use claims principle here this is also going to be provided by ASP.NET Core only we don't have to worry about this claims principle and we'll call it user or maybe principal all right now we have everything so first thing we'll get user id from this claims principle so how can we get that we are using this so let's have this thing here so our user id equals so principal dot same thing find first and here we'll say claim types dot name identifier dot value all right now it should not be null so for that we'll we know it is not going to be null how can we know on this map post we are going to add a one check that is going to be dot require authorization we're adding it here that means this will only be called when the user is authenticated if user is not authenticated it will simply return 401 which is the responsibility of this ASP.NET Core only all right so here we know that this is not going to be null now this thing we are going to call it again and again so it's good idea to move this somewhere we can have it here or this thing principal.find first and getting the user id from claims principal this is being used here in main api project and we just saw this thing in our short url generator form here as well because here this auth state dot user this was also claims principal so we can create an extension method on this claims principal to get the user id and because this is going to call from both the projects it's better to have it in client project so in this client project we are going to create a folder we'll say extensions slash here we'll create one class claims principal extensions dot cs all right because this is going to be extension class so for extension method so this class needs to be static then this method needs to be static so public static string we'll say get user id and this extension method we are creating with this for claims principle principle like this and from here we can simply have this logic claims principle dot find first this thing so principle dot find first name identifier dot value now this time it could be null because here we are not sure so let's handle that case let's return the label string from here so save it and we are good now we, now we can modify both the places so here we are getting user id so what we'll do auth state dot user dot get user id now we need to add that using statement here this so it's better idea to move this as well to the underscore imports all right so save it and now on this blazor component we are good get user id now same thing we'll go to our endpoint where is our endpoint link endpoint and here instead of doing all this we'll say principal dot get user id with this using statement and when now we are good okay so now we have user id now we can check if user id equals equals dto dot user id that means what is passed from the ui that means the logged in users id on the ui 
and on the server both are same then we are good if that's not the case we can simply return maybe um, forbidden or maybe unauthorized unauthorized results dot unauthorized like we can return this all right now if this is correct that means on client on ui and on api the current logged in user is fine everything is matching then we can simply say word dto equals or maybe word link equals await link service dot create link async and we can pass a dto from here like this and now from here we can simply return results dot ok and we'll return this link now our endpoint is ready and we can use this endpoint from our client project now from client project we want to use this so one approach is using http client but that is going to take a lot of time lot of boilerplate and error handling and there are so many things so if you are following me from previous videos for maui and blazor so i love one http client library that is refit so i use that some people call it refit or refit so i call it refit so i'm going to use that only i think i have already created a video for that as well for using maui i am sure we have a video for blazor i don't remember if we have or not Mm -hmm. let's quickly check oh channel is open here videos please mm -hmm. missing part complete full stack this folder refresh render mode tab bar mm, i guess no no that is not here but we have one video for maui this one so i'm going to drop this link as well if you want to check it out how if it works or i'm going to explain in this video but not in much detail but yeah we'll work on this all right if you want a dedicated video for this how to use refit client for uh, blazor web assembly interactive auto and interactive web assembly do let me know in the comment i can try to create a dedicated video for that as well all right so for that in client project we are going to add install a new get package so manage new get packages browse and here we'll say refit.http client factory this package let's install this apply all right now in program.cs here we can now say builder dot services dot add refit add refit client Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Need it? yeah using refit so add refit client but this needs something this t type parameter generic type parameter so we need to provide this thing now how this refit client works we can create we need to just create interfaces and the implementation is the responsibility of refit so refit is going to create an implementation which will actually call the api or whatever endpoint or urls we are providing so for this what we are going to do in this client project we are going to create a services folder inside this i am going to create an interface i link api all right so this is the interface here we need to define our api endpoints related stuff so right now we just have one api which is of type task link dtu this is the return type here we'll say create link async and here we need to provide link create dtu 
like this and now we need to just provide HTTP verb in this case this is going to post and inside this we need to provide path so that is a complete URL that is API slash links this is the URL now we are good now we can simply use this ilink API in program.cs when we are registering this add rapid client so here we will say add rapid client and we will provide this ilink API now inside this we can provide rapid settings if we want if not that is also fine if we don't want to all right so after adding this it has one method extension method configure http client because using this we provided the url the path but on which domain the actual api is the main domain so api is base url basic that we have not provided so for that we can come here on this add rapid client and we can say configure http client it is taking one action delegate of type http client so we will get this http client here and now we can modify this http client so on this http client what we are going to do we are going to set the base address okay so on this we can simply set whatever base address it is and because we are running this as interactive auto render mode so the main wrapper project is actually the main ASP.NET Core project only so we can use the same domain which we are right now on. okay so for this what we will say we can say var current or maybe let's say api url equals we will say builder dot host environment dot base address this is the current url so we can use this only this is of type string but base address is of type uri so here we will say base address equals new uri this api url so using this our rapid client is ready now we can simply inject this ilink api and we can start using it now we can inject this ilink api here uh, wherever we need it for example we need this in here but here we have one problem the problem is this ilink service still uh, the implementation of ilink service is not here right so one approach could be we can inject ilink api here using this link api we can add this using statement here now we need to check if we are in we are rendering this component on server then we need to use this link service and when it is going to be used from web assembly from client then it needs to use this link api so we need to have some conditional thing here but that is not the way to work so what we will do here we will simply add one more implementation of i link service in this client project okay so we have the services so in services only we'll create our let's say link service or maybe link proxy service we can name it whatever we want maybe link api proxy something like this okay and this needs to be an implementation of i link service all right let's implement this interface we have this method here so create link api now we know this this link api proxy this is actually a class which is going to make http call to the api using that uh, on that endpoint so that means in order to make that http call we are using refit so we need and for that we already have this i link api so we can inject this i link api into link api proxy so here what we'll do we'll simply add a constructor here we'll have i link api we'll have link api like this and then from here we can directly have link api that is underscore link api dot create link async and we can pass this dto directly like this all right now we are good here 
what we can do now we can simply we are already injecting iLink service on this blazor component we just need to tell this that this if you are running on web assembly on client then you need to use this link api proxy as a implementation of iLink service so what we will do in this program.cs we will simply register it using we will say builder dot services dot add transient we will say i link service and then implementation is link api proxy like this so now this registration is in both the projects if it is running on server we have this so for inside server for i link service it is going to use link service which is defined in here only for database with database interaction now if it is running in client then for client we are saying that for iLink service you need to use link api proxy and if you go to link api proxy here we are injecting iLink api okay so iLink api is actually the traffic client which is making http call to the backend to the same thing and in the backend we have this endpoint where for this slash link service we are using this iLink service now this is again inside server so in server this iLink service implementation is the actual link service this one with database interaction so at the end this method is the main method which is going to be called from both the places from server side it is going to directly call and from client side using web assembly it will be http call and then it will come to the same method so actual implementation the final implementation is this only all right so all this thing this sounds confusing complex but i have explained this thing in detail in that video where i showed you how to fetch data in uh, blazor interactive auto render mode so i would highly recommend you to check that video out and then come back to this video so then it will be it will make more sense and you will be uh, comfortable with this all this setup right for me it is not that complicated because I have already implemented it and I know how these things are working. So if you'll see that video and then come to it, so you will also understand it for sure. And if still there is something which is not clear, so I'm always there, you can drop me a comment and I can answer it. I'll be more than happy to answer. Or you can connect with me on the Discord. I'm going to add Discord link in description as well so that we can have discuss around it there as well. All right okay so now all the pcs are connected now we can try to run it and i can show you by adding couple of endpoints first in link api proxy then we'll come to the server side we have link endpoint then services link service all right so i have added three breakpoints let's run it okay it's coming it is here now let's do this let's first inspect network and here we'll have fetch selected we'll see now let's add some url here shorten url and breakpoint got hit and this time this is the component level breakpoint so we know this will go to this login page we'll fix this later let's add this pwd at the rate one two three let's use remember me of sure maybe not login this time there is no error because it found that that thing uh, that Uh, the implementation insert client project as well all right now what we'll do for now let's do this this time we are logged in i'm simply going to refresh this page so that we have it using signal app all right so here i'll add that long url https abcd.com shorten this url it came here and i'm going to put a breakpoint here on this line now and then this line all right let's run it 
वी आर हेयर फ्रॉम लिंक सर्विस नाउ लेट सी वेयर इट गोज दिस टाइम इट वेंट टू लिंक ए पी आई प्रॉक्सी दैट मीन्स इट इज रनिंग यूजिंग वेब असेंबली एंड लेट्स रन कंटिन्यू इट देर सम एर वट इज इट मेमोरी एक्सेस आउट ऑफ बाउंड कंडीशन डिसेबल नोट माइट वट इज इट Hmm, something is not right. Is there in the server side there is no error? There is some error in client side only. Uncaught error in promise exit status. Program terminated with exit. And what is the error? We don't know. Let's check network tab. Did it try to create uh, initiate that request? And it did not. Let's stop it and let's try to run it one more time. Maybe something is missing or something is not right. Link API create link async. If we go to this slash API slash link post and program dot cs, we have this registrations. So everything seems fine. Let's see what we have here. If I put a breakpoint here, let's run it. I just want to see if this is giving us the correct uh, URL. And it didn't. Breakpoint didn't reach here. All right, let's put a breakpoint here. Let's first log in. P W D at the rate one two three, and now it came here. All right. API URL seven one zero eight. This is the same, right? Seven one zero eight. Yes, this thing is fine. So we can continue. And this now it came here. Continue. and we are good now let's open network fetch let's try to do this https abcd.com shorten url breakpoint shorten url continue continue link api proxy continue and now it came here so maybe it was not built properly so from link api proxy it came to this api endpoint minimal api endpoint in the server project here we will check we have user id yes this is the current logged in user id then we are simply creating this link here we have domain which we already defined one two three four short code it got generated ho to ryt this then we are creating link saving it into the database and returning this so now we are good we simply return it now it's processing the false if we check this link we should have the link id 1 is active true long url abcd short url and we have one problem with the logic short url should have that code as well so i'll stop it i'll go to link service again and here short url short url this so this should not be domain this should be domain slash the short code all right now we are not sure if domain is going to have that slash or not so it's better to trim uh, trim and trim the slash from and if that is inside domain and then we'll add our own slash so it will always guarantee that there will be only single slash between these two so now it will be something like https localhost localhost colon one two three four slash then our short code whatever it is hxcy2 whatever it is all right so it will be something like this so save it and now from there we are coming like this that means it is working fine now if we'll run it now we can i guess remove all the breakpoints so we are able to get the data using 
the API layer as well. Debug and disable all black breakpoints. Continue. Now we don't need this thing. We'll remove this thing. All right. So we are here. Now we can add the short URL here and then shorten this URL. So it should work fine. Now let's okay. So for now, let's try to create one more https abcd.com again i'm going to use the same thing shorten url and this ux will fix it pwd at the rate one two three login again we need to add that https abcd.com shorten the url it again came here why is there a shamish issue let's try it out blazing urls let's go to our form let's add this breakpoint here we need to work on this as well if this shouldn't be here if we are not logged in try log out login pwd at the rate one two three login https abcd.com shorten url breakpoint got hit auth state and is authenticated is true everything is fine dto this link we have loader and then let's check if we got the data in this link so id true is a id2 is active true long url this one and short url is localhost1234 slash this iz9ohs so that means the url is generating so our create link service are fetching the data with interactive auto this thing is also working everything is working fine now we'll start working on next piece which is going to be fixing this this thing to provide a better user experience so that user don't have to uh, add or enter or paste the URL long URL again. All right, that thing we'll do next. All right. <clears throat> 